talks have escalated and progressed really well in the last 24 to 48 hours. Like you say, we expect a formal announcement in the next week. But there's a lot of work to be done for Pochettino and you'd expect he'd spend the rest of the season doing an audit before he formally takes charge in the summer. There's a lot of things to work on. You look at Chelsea and they've got such a bloated, expensive, underperforming squad. And I think the overarching thing for him will be to try and extract the best out of the resources he has, which he's proven he excels at throughout his managerial career, but also to ruthlessly trim down that squad. Anyone who doesn't meet his tactical demands or the standards he expects, they will be chopped. The other thing is a playing style. He has to give Chelsea an identity. They don't have it. And they need to know what they're working towards in possession, out of possession. Each player needs to know their role and function within the team. That will happen during the course of pre-season. You think about the high press, the overloads, how well he uses fullbacks for his offensive attacks, the quick transitions, all of those things he needs to give to that team. Uh, and I, th I think that's what Chelsea are craving more than anything who they are, you know, beyond just this expensive assembly of the world's best young talent, really. The other thing is the conditioning of that squad. Pochettino football is very demanding. It's exacting. If you remember his Tottenham squad at their peak, they were the hardest runners in the league. Now, Frank Lampard recently said that the squad is not in good physical condition. So a lot of work needs to be done fitness-wise with his close core, the four staff members he will be bringing along with him to Stamford Bridge. Jesus Perez is very, very good at conditioning a squad. So all of those, I think, as a base, is what Pochettino will start working with. Sounds like a horrible preseason if you're a, a Chelsea <laughs> player. Those who stay, if if he moves enough out, there might be a bit of a war chest. Might be looking around. Should Spurs fans be worried about Harry Kane moving across London? Are you trying to cause the apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not causing anything. I'm asking questions. <laughs> um, listen, Maurizio Pochettino transformed Harry Kane from the fourth choice striker at Tottenham and helped him become a world-class, goal-scoring, record-breaking phenom. Their relationship stretches beyond football. They've, they're very close, they still keep in contact, and obviously Pochettino and Chelsea would love the guarantee of goals Harry Kane brings, but no. Tottenham <laughs> insist Harry Kane is not for sale, especially not to Chelsea. And Harry Kane himself knows his legacy at Spurs will be severely tarnished if he moves across to Stamford Bridge. There's already a section of Tottenham fans who are so angry at Pochettino for being on the brink of becoming Chelsea manager. And if you look at it, you know, Pochettino didn't have the option of going to Spurs this time around. And it's so different because before and after Tottenham, Pochettino worked elsewhere. You know, he's not been associated with Spurs since 2019. Whereas Harry Kane is one of their own. He's got the choice to remain at Spurs. He could go to Manchester United. He could go to Bayern Munich. There, there's more for him to play with. And so, nah, if it looks like a non-starter and if it sounds like a non-starter, it probably <laughs> is a non-starter. <laughs>